Catalyst 2030 is a movement of social entrepreneurs and innovators embracing collective action to achieve the SDGs by the deadline 2030. Our 1,500 members are active in 197 countries. By emphasizing collaborations, Catalyst 2030 is leveraging the power of the collective to accelerate real change in the lives of billions of people around the globe. What do our members say about Catalyst? Catalyst 2030 is an invaluable global community of impact entrepreneurs. Our relationship with Catalyst 2030 has really taught us the power of co-creation. Join Catalyst 2030 and network, bond, and collaborate with our family members. And I like the spirit of bringing change makers together to share and learn from each other. Catalyst really understands the transformative nature of um, collaboration. It's also a platform that um, can give us um, new tools and resources. Catalyst 2030 has put my work on steroids. But most importantly, to come up with solutions that are practical, ways where we can really make things happen, because social entrepreneurs are doers. Are you a Catalyst? Join us to achieve the SDGs. And with that, I um, welcome everyone here to our session, how film can tell a story of a new world. And yeah, we are officially starting here. We are all here for, I think, a similar reason. And this video showed what we all aim for. And let's get into it. And maybe we can all have a part in this. And I'd invite you to a little story to get slowly into storytelling utopias. So just sit down, lay back, and just listen for a couple of minutes. I'm waking up in the morning. It's sunny outside with a refreshing breeze around me. With a cup of tea, I walk outside, sit down at the table, open up my laptop. I'm surrounded by nature. I listen to the sound of the, of the birds. It's very green. I start reading the news and it's absolutely great and motivating. I read about how we get closer to completely eliminating hunger in this world. I see an article about how we support each other across borders to rebuild what has been destroyed in wars. But there's no war anymore in this world, nowhere. We found fuel and techniques that made it possible to decrease emission and pollution drastically so that we can contain the most severe consequences of climate change. I could go on forever because there's so much good news. But enough for today. Let's get to work. Change obviously doesn't happen by itself. But with my small freelance business, I can be part of it. Welcome to the end of my 2029. And congratulations to all of us. It looks like we managed to gather together to achieve the SDGs by next year. Thank you for taking that little journey to my personal utopia. To me, it's not kind of good, but you might think it's also unrealistic. But that is what stories and utopias are for. You, can, you are free to imagine how your future and your story is going to look like. And with this, that, welcome. My name is Karina Reinhardt, and I will be the host for the session. I'm a producer coming from a background from marketing and commercials. I started last year to shift my work and focus more on producing videos, film, media content with a more socioeconomic background and an impact and purpose for society. For some, maybe a so-called newbie to the sector, um, my drive comes especially from inspiring and motivating other people through content, how we can make a change and how, can, how we can make some, something new, something different. And this is what we invite you all together and for the next 60 to 90 minutes to explore how films can tell a story of a new world. And we will discuss and give some interesting insights on how you can bring your own story to a next level and just become part of a big change. We will start with a short introduction of our main speakers, Johanna Jauris, Karl Fechner and Rainer Dunkel. And we will have a conversation with our main guest, one of our main guests, Frank Otto. Um, after that, we will go a little bit more deeper to have a panel discussion. 
and Carl and Johanna will um, introduce, introduce us to their film project, The Story of a New World. And before we finish up to, with our breakout sessions and a little workshop part, the, uh, we will listen to an interview for, with Julius van der Laar, a political strategist and campaign advisor. A side note, we're going to record that whole session so that you're all aware. Um, I hope you're all fine with that. You can leave your video turned off. We have one um, moment where we ask you to turn it on, but of course, of course, it's all voluntarily. And if there are any questions in between the sessions, feel free to just put your question in the chat and we will try to include them in our discussion. And there will be, of course, some time in the end to discuss those questions. And now I will hand over the word to Johanna. Thank you so much, Karina, also for your beautiful utopian vision. And you already made something really, really right. And we come back to that later in the panel on how actually to tell stories so they can have an influence on other people. So I'm really happy to be here. I'm Johanna Jaurich. I'm a director and producer of Sustainable Films. I'm also participating in a broad network of women in sustainability that is called Future Women. Um, so you can already see that the future is a very big part of my present because I'm working on visions for most of the time. I'm also a jury member of Trophée de Femmes. This is, um, yeah, like an, an NGO and a foundation to support female change makers and to further connect them in the field of sustainability. And currently I'm working on a worldwide film and impact project called The Story of a New World, which we will talk about deeper in the panel as well. So it's my pleasure to hand over to my co-director, Carl. Yeah, thank you very much, Johanna. Um, I'm Karl Fechner. I'm activist and I'm journalist and above all director and producer. With my company, Fechner Media, I have been showing role models for sustainable action for over 30 years. I'm also a board member of Protect the Planet as a Society for Ecological Awakening. And I'm recipient of the Baum Environmental Award and uh, the German Solar Award. It's, uh, in the last, uh, and very much more, very many more. I'm currently working with Johanna Jaurich on our impact and film project, The Story of a New World. And I think the main idea of my world, of my life, is um, to show really visions, ideas, and perspectives. So if you would like to, to join us, you will, you will uh, really uh, get informed about those subjects more than about catastrophes. So thank you very much. Good morning. Good afternoon, everybody, wherever you are calling in from. My name is Rainer Dunkel. I am from uh, Germany. And I am a social entrepreneur as recently founded and co-founded the Broadcast.org Media Foundation. Our intent is to raise the visibility and awareness for social entrepreneurs globally. We think we need to know about their social innovations and their projects. And this is our cause. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, look forward to the discussions and let's go for it. Thank you. Thanks to all of you for the great introductions and getting to know a little bit more about you. Um, and we go on to our next exciting point. And I want to start with a quote. Through creativity, ideas become innovations, motives become reality, and poets and thinkers become doers. For Frank Otto, this is not only the most important drive, but a very personal matter. So he's a media entrepreneur, a former anti-nuclear activist, and is involved in many, many sustainability projects, so from Hamburg Climate Change Week to the German Ocean Foundation. Um, we are really happy to have him here today live, and Rainer will have a little conversation interview with him, and I'm really excited to welcome Frank Otto. Yeah, hello. <laughs> hello. Good morning, Frank. Good, mo good morning, Frank. Yeah, uh, nice to have you here. It's, it's a pleasure. It's an honor. Mm -hmm. um, you are engaged with this project, The Story of a New World. And I am very curious, and I know many others are as well, 
what motivated you to engage and participate in this project? As it was said, I'm engaged in making climate change aware and uh, against nuclear power and also for the ocean for, for many years. And I think we are now at a point uh, uh, we have to show how the future could be because there are many people are anxious about that they have to dare that uh, things become complicated and i think uh, we have to show that there are good solutions and that we look into a good future and not into a bad future all right that makes total sense to me um and you know when this film is produced it will reach a lot of people um what is your personal hope that this movie will have an effect in the society and with the audience? Uh, of course, that um, people get known about ideas and solutions, uh, what will or what could happen in the future, uh, how things could happen, and make them uh, positive uh, for new things. Yeah? It's not that. Um, not everybody is normally committed for changes yeah so people have settled in their life and yeah so and it's uh, sometimes it's difficult to explain how important it is uh, to change uh, little things uh, but if you show them how uh, nice the future could be um, then it's easier because because they feel more comfortable and I think that is one important thing, what this film can reach out to the audience. Uh, I wish it will become a must-see film. <laughs> and uh, and I, I, we have to take the people by the hands and, and, and show them that we are going in the right direction. So what I hear from your answer is that it's all about, you know, having a positive view of the future and having uh, an inspiring hope and, and uh, happiness to look forward to a future which is good, rather than looking at the bad news and all, all the time looking at what's um, not so nice and it can be depressing many times. So when we, when we um, refer to the audience and the viewers of the movie in the future, um, what would you tell them personally, you, Frank, to them individually, if you could, uh, what they could individually do to grow the movement and to support the, the uh, aspiration. Look, I'm, I'm co-founder of the um, German Ocean Foundation and I'm focused on oceans for a very simple reason. Because uh, in the oceans, there are no borders. And uh, so if we want to get healing the oceans, then we have to cooperate. And I think that is the most important thing when we will do changes, we have to cooperate. Changing is not a thing what one person can do by its own. Yeah, We have to work together, everybody. And I think that uh, could be the signal. That is, uh, for me, the most important thing that we learn to cooperate and that we create uh, uh, the future together. Wonderful. Frank, thank you so much for your answers and for the conversation. We're gonna have a discussion here on the panel. And we will also collect a couple of questions from the audience and uh, um, any questions from the audience to Frank, uh, he will be here in a couple more minutes. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Over to you, Karina. <laughs> so as I see at this point, there's no question in the chat. If there's anything coming up for Frank Otto, please let us know. We will, sh happy, we will be happy to share. And this is the moment when we go over to more open discussion between, I see a hand here, Johanna has a question. <laughs> yes. Hi, Frank. So great to have you here. It's really, really good to see you again. Um, and thanks so much for your support of the story of a new world. I'm really curious, as you've been talking about the importance of um, good stories and better visions and actually motivating people through what they can get rather than what they might lose, how it is currently discussed, in my opinion. Can you give us a little deep dive into your utopia, into your visions of a better future and like the complexity and the ideas, how you imagine to live in maybe 10 years, for example, let's say as a 
is a Catalyst 2030 session, let's say. How does your Utopia 2030 looks like? Yeah. <clears throat> so for me, it's my experience. Uh, you use the word Utopia and uh, the funny thing is uh, when I was young, there was a book, it was called Ökotopia. And there were things written in uh, which uh, didn't exist. Yeah, so, but it took only a few years. Uh, and uh, all these things uh, which were written in this book uh, did exist. And, uh, and that is, uh, I think, that is the impact uh, that a film like this uh, can, can do. And we know about uh, the problems, especially in Germany, we have now uh, for uh, get our energy. And um, I think at the moment, everybody is very, uh, is focused on, on, on that, that we have to change the way we have done it, uh, to get our energy in the past. And, uh, and there is a, a trust in the meanwhile that uh, we will get to our goal. And uh, that was not before. That is a new uh, feeling I have in this country. And so uh, I think uh, it's always little steps that, that make the change, but, but a little correction in, in the direction uh, is on, on the long term is a very, very big uh, uh, difference uh, to what was in the past. And so for me, it is a little bit, there's always this John Lennon song, Imagine in my mind, yes. <laughs> and uh, I know uh, if you look on the realistic world, there's a war in Ukraine, there's yeah, things like that we don't like. And uh, uh, we have dif difficulties to understand uh, why that happens. Uh, Cause in our mind, we are st still ahead. We're still steps further and uh, to destroy things is not our uh, perspective. So for me, it's uh, the easy thing, what, what I think is that we uh, will not live against the nature in the future. We will live with the nature. We will get uh, profit from the nature. Yeah, so uh, it is a different mindset. But uh, I, I think we can reach that. And it, it's not that complicated than many people think. That's actually a beautiful transition to the Catalyst 2030 model of collaborating through social entrepreneurship, but also collaborating with nature. So thank you so much, Frank, for your deep dive. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for the time, for the, all the answers to the questions. Thank you, Johanna, for that great question. And. We will continue to the next part. And I'm happy to have Johanna, Rainer, Frank, if you have some more time to stay, that would be great. And of course, Carl, to discuss a few more topics. So as we already discussed, we are all used by now to news and reports that are talking about all the destruction and all the bad things that are happening. And sometimes it might be a little discouraging and not really like, encouraging, motivating to get started and what can we do because there's so much going on in this world. And I believe that most of the people are aware that we have to do something, that we have to reduce emissions, pollution, that we have to find alternative ways to conserve resources, habitat, um, that we need to renewable energies. We all know that. Um, and our living space, it's where we are is really endangered and it's for our lives, of course, all the danger, and especially the living and the future for our future generations is, yeah, it's really hard for them. So actually the younger generation is probably the generation that gives right now the most hope because they are aware and they are requesting the change and they want to have a livable future. So as I said, everyone seems to be aware, but still it's kind of hard to get started. So what is holding us back? or slowing us down to achieve an actual change and transformation. And I would like to dive into this discussion and see what our thoughts are. And we are happy to include you as a um, audience too. If you have any thoughts on your mind or any questions, feel free to always interact with us. That's what we are here for. 
I mean, Johanna already. Yeah, like, oh, there's so much to say about that, Karina. So I'm trying to make it short so we have like a discussion and, and not a monothematic kind of uh, approach. Actually, I do think the first part of like, I mean, your question is what is holding us back to actually proceed the changes that we know already, basically. We know, we know what to do. Um, and I think the first thing is we actually need to acknowledge the multi complexity of what we're facing and that basically a topic like climate change or rather call it climate catastrophe because climate change is kind of neutral and it isn't I mean it's life threatening. The complexity and also. Like it is not so deeply related to us all the time every day like a short catastrophe like for example the flood in Aital in Germany or like the heat wave in India right now that is like that is currently a catastrophe people are facing and we're really good in the actual solutions of dealing with catastrophes of that kind but cli the climate catastrophe is something that is gonna like level up in the next few years we are not having that mono causal part of if i'm doing that then i'm adding on the climate catastrophe it's kind of very complex and we're not psychological wired for that to be honest um i can like i through our studies also in regard of the research of the story of a new world we found out about reni lerzmann's work and she's just a brilliant environment of psychologist and what really opened up my eyes was when she said we have that specific window of tolerance so and in that window of tolerance we are most capable as human beings to actually solve problems and to actually deal with the cl climate catastrophe if we are getting out of that window of tolerance, what happens is depression or anxieties that is like so common in nowadays societies. I mean, have a look at the psychological diseases gaining every year, especially with younger generations. Or on the other side, we get uh, we, we dive into cynicism, right? We're like, OK, what I can like my own life. I can not do anything against the climate change. So what we need to get back into that window of tolerance and to be capable of finding solutions is acknowledge and really be emotional with each other and empathetic and really be like, this is multi-complex. We all don't know exactly how we can solve this, but we need to try and we need to collabor collaborate and we need to find a way and like, use evolution in the best way because I, and that's my last point, I'm just really deeply convinced as human beings that we're capable of so much more than what we are actually doing. I would be really interested in Cards and Reiner's opinions and thoughts on that. I'm happy I'm happy to add real quick, um, Johanna, thank you for, for the heads up, um, literally. Um, I think it is uh, important if you, look, if you look at climate change, the way it goes right now that it is important for us for all of us to change our attitude attitude i think is more important than changing the behavior because behavior is basically saying i am accepting accepting what other people say i should do if we change our attitude we actually do that intrinsically and we don't need to be motivated because we have an openness to the facts and we know by heart what needs to be done and we feel it. And here comes the storytelling as part of the very, very important aspect of it. Uh, when we hear stories, we feel it. When we feel something, we are engaging, we have an emotional reaction to it, and that can move mountains. If I hear the news in the television that gives me facts and numbers, that is, the, the numbers and facts are so big that I cannot possibly have an emotion to it because it's too abstract. So storytelling comes into play a lot, and uh, I'm just, um, you know, wanna wanna raise the the issue and and discuss the issue of attitude uh, towards the facts, and so we can actually all go and do something about it. Carl, you wanna say something? Yeah, um, you see, I am doing doing films and more uh, than thirty years, and in the beginning, I did uh, I started with films about uh, peace and war. 
and then I recognized in, in Iraq, by the way, yeah, uh, 1920, 1990, around about that. Um, and then I recognized that people are very aware about, uh, let's say, tragedies and, and uh, bad news. It is unbelievable. So it seems to be that. So that's uh, when I did these reports, I was uh, from, from Baghdad and all that. There was uh, yeah, a reporter from Baghdad and all that. It, is, uh, it was very really crazy uh, that for, I was very successful with that. Um, and, but then I said I was, I was a war winner. And this is uh, one of the first decisions. And it is a question of decision making. It was a decision that I didn't want to be a, 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 a war winner. Yeah, it, it was good for the career, by the way, for the money too. Yeah, um, and it was a decision that I said, I would like the, to be the person who is inviting people uh, to, to, let's say, to change their life in another way. So uh, films, my films, are mostly invitations. And, and to do that, I tell you, it is very much more, uh, you have to be, you have to have very much more efforts by uh, doing films. If you report about, uh, about war or, or something like that, you need a camera and you go there and you, you film, you see it in the moment in Ukraine too. Yeah, there are lots of, uh, of, of your reports about that. Um, and it seems that people are, are have a, a big awareness by that. If you would like to, to show people uh, yeah, examples of surviving, yeah, you need more, you, you, you need uh, really, you need more, let's say, uh, you're doing, you have to do more for that. Uh, very much high standard uh, music, high standard pictures and all that. It is very interesting. But what is very, very important by that is um, that uh, in this, uh, this is an invitation to, to, that's what Johanna uh, might uh, say too, it is an invitation to live better. So it is very, very important not to show people, oh, that it's uh, this ecological life. Yeah, it is so hard because you have uh, no more flying, all that. I'm living in a solar house. I'm, from here, I'm, I'm speaking here from a solar house, which is producing more energy than it is using. And I'm, I'm doing, uh, doing, uh, doing, using a car, electric car, since eight years. And I tell you, this is really a better life. Uh, you feel better, and that that is it. That is uh, the. I'm very much um, convinced that that films can do that. Yeah, can invite for that, um, and, and uh, this is is an invitation to decide. And that is uh, the question of my life, for example. Yeah, <laughs> that's why a very important film of my life was the power to change. How can we really let's say in, invite? people to change it. And I'm not convinced, very much convinced for that by, uh, let's say, examples that people are doing that. I'm surrounded by thousands of people, which I know, or hundreds of thousands, who did that. Or to say, it's a better life then. Um, and that is, I mean, that's the story of my life to, to, to show it that it is possible. Yeah. May I, may I add something, Karina? Do we have one yeah. more minute? Um, because what you said, Rainer, it's not so much a matter of behavior, but attitude. And I think that's a crucial point at the moment, right? Like that's where we are currently standing, that we feel like the way we did it before is not working anymore, but we haven't really found a new way. And the week before on a Friday, I was attending the first Inner Development Gold Summit, and that just really blew my mind because we are talking about the sustainable development goals and that's so important but we know that for a few years already but it doesn't seem to really make a profound change of shaping the direction and like switching the direction in which we're going to and heading to so with the inner development goals i would just love to give you like a tiny little introduction into this because these are five categories with 23 goals in total and it's about being it's about thinking it's about relating collaborating and acting and i think this is the missing piece of the puzzle and discussions we're having nowadays that we're not really addressing us as human beings but rather just from like a logic perspective of 
okay, it's it's better to invest in renewable energies, for example, but we don't really feel it. We don't feel what Kai just said. It is actually also something that makes our lives better, that makes other people's lives better, that we have that opportunity of collaborating much more as human beings. And just because Quentin was asking that in the chat, Quentin, great that you're here. Um, we're mostly producing documentaries, but also we're currently working on a documentary fictional approach with the story of a new world. So we're like linking feature films and documentaries, but we dive deeper into that in, in the next round, just so that you know, it's not like, it's, it's about storytelling in general, but in regard of film, like the whole spectrum basically. Yeah, great that you picked up that question because I was about to ask Quentin to come in and just like ask that question, but we're gonna slowly get closer to, no, that's all good, that's perfect. <laughs> um, we slowly gonna go more and more into the direction of film and I hope by then this question will be answered for you, Quentin, and we are happy to get you in and you can ask your question personally. Um, yeah, um, so I really like how you all like kind of got like gave you personal view and it is um we talk about yeah how can we become happier and it is about becoming happy happier and being more emotional towards that whole goal that we try to achieve um and the inner development goals that um johanna um, explained in the beginning and i believe pretty much everyone would agree on that but how the question is really like, how can we get there and how can like an, an individual break own habits because it's i think it's pretty much also a topic of yeah yeah all is, everyone is living by certain habits and how can we break these and just find out oh if i do it a little differently that doesn't mean it's more difficult but rather it might make it easier and better and yeah so what is your point of view on that how we really can give individual a way to make it easier for them to achieve this change and whoever wants to start is free to start. <laughs> uh, let me just start from a personal experience. Um, I think we need to be more radical. I think we have, uh, once you have uh, decided to be a part of, uh, let's say the change, yeah, you should have, you should really, uh, yeah, um, work for that or fight for that. The most, uh, let's say, um, yeah, but strongest feeling I had when I was in resistance. I was in resistance against uh, nuclear power in, in Mutlangen. I was in resistance uh, and in, uh, and in uh, Gorleben too. And I'm not just not resistance against using coal uh, in Lützerat. And um, that, is, that is, I mean, you will be beaten and it's, it's making pain. But after this decision to really fight for that, if you feel better, isn't it funny? Uh, I'm sure that um, the time is really to fight for that. Of course, in a peaceful way, but in a, in a, in a, in a radical way. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very sure that um, we should, be, should work stronger for that. We don't need to talk about that. This is, this is my personal, you know, my, as a filmmaker, I showed them, yeah, I did, uh, I, I did film 25 years ago, which is just now, uh, still now very important. It is, um, it is uh, yeah, exhausted film showing, uh, the, the title was exhausting. It shows uh, 45 minutes of resistance uh, in, in Gorleben. And just now we are over, we, we, are, we, are, we, we stop nuclear power. 40 years of fighting, and I tell you, uh, this is a part of, of my life which is very, which makes me happy. And perhaps we should, we should, it is a time, it's, it's a time for that too, to be radical, radical, peaceful, radical. I agree with you in regard of the urgency, um, but also in re like, I kind of disagree or like, let's say mm -hmm. I'd like to add something in regard of the method. Because yes, peaceful civil disobedience is one way, but it cannot be the only way. I feel like if we want to really collaborate in that, we all need to find our own position in the movement. And actually, 
there, I don't want to dive too deep into this, but in transformation studies, there are like various um, positions that are equally important for driving system change. And it's not just the fighters and the front lines. Um, and what I'd like to add on that is like, our, there's a study of Erika Chenoweth that showed that we need 3.5% of the general public in a peaceful civil disobedience and actually not just fighting against something, but rather have a really big vision of what they're fighting for and what they like, what, where they want to go to. And then these movements are successful. If you have an idea of what you would like to do better and would like to change. And I'd like to add one more thing because except for the fighting part and let's call it the active part, I don't really much like the word fighting, especially not in these times. Um, and especially not on May 9th today. Um, what like is very important from my personal perspective is the things that you surround yourself with let's be it perspectives like solutions or the media constructive media that you consume but also in your local communities there's a kind of saying where you have where the mind goes the energy flows right so if we're like surrounding ourselves it's really bad news all the time and that makes us like that that is not supporting our activeness or our well-being so rather i i feel like we need to talk more about possible solutions and as we just said what we get instead of what we might lose we need to get to know role models in our communities we need to use media in a constructive way we also need to make ourselves more vulnerable because we are all especially the panelists and like the the attendees in the session we all came across catalyst 2030 so i suppose we're all on the mission of sustainable change and driving that change and we're all doing and we're all at a specific step right now and i think it is so it's such an invitation to go out there and to let the world and your community know where you're standing at um, and make yourself vulnerable because no one has that one goal. We are all, it's, it's a process. Sustainability is a process. We will never reach a specific goal and then lay back and be like, okay, great, fight is over, we did it. It's, it's not gonna be like that. It's an evolutionary process. Well, I would like to add something. Yes. <clears throat> We are in an age that where our experience was that ecology was something for people which are crazy and economy was something for people which are reasonable. And I think this kind of thinking has already changed because those words came from the same word, the Greek word oikos. And I think the people understand in the meanwhile that we have to bring that together. And, uh, and, and the fight uh, for bringing that together is a different kind of fight than the fights to be against a power plant, uh, nuclear power plant or something like that. Yeah? So uh, I think, yes, of course, uh, uh, the civil society has also to show their strength always. Yes, so we have to do also <laughs> these things. But I think the most thing what has to happen now is the change in the mind. <laughs> yeah, let me. Okay. <clears throat> I, I, uh, this goes. This goes back to the Frank uh, to the question Frank uh, that I asked you uh, just a couple of minutes ago about the individuals. Um, and I think the the every individuals that we have, they are looking for role models, but they have role models that can. You know, jump in the calls, they can understand, they can ask questions, they don't feel alone, they can just follow the movement. And then we should be aware of the fact that we have two power tools, every one of us, which is one, we are consumers, and another one, we are voters. We can change everything when we change our consumption. We can also change everything if we are uh, voting for the leaders in office that are fulfilling the goals that we are that we want to see happen uh, and, and this um, is being ignited if we have people we can look up to and the activists are the heroes and we, we are not expecting i'm not expecting from anybody to all go on the street uh, because everybody has their strength 
and their weaknesses and everybody needs to look at their um, personally and individually for their strength and their potential um, consume correctly vote the right people into your office and then be a, be a role become a role model yourself for further um, getting more people on board I would like to really to discuss that uh, with the people in Lützerath who are staying there since uh, two years, living in tents and all that, and located uh, more than 200 in the winter time. I was there. Um, I agree, Frank. Of course, I agree. Yeah, but I but uh, it's so it should something like be Speerspitze. Uh, that means um, the the activists are a part of the change. Because they had uh, they had decided to be to, to work like that. It's clear that we need the economic. I'm just uh, part of uh, yeah. Let's say uh, um, and, 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 uh, a big um, yeah a big idea. It's an economic manifest manifestation. Yeah. So that we have to change. Of course, we can do it. I mean, we do it together with the with the with the changed um, yeah economic. It's clear. But, well, that's a good yeah. point to yeah. um, get into maybe films and how we can now with film try to tell a different story instead of like focusing just on the tragedy and just the catastrophe, what we need to know and we need to be aware of. But how can film now help to focus more on the solution inside? How can we through solutions potentially help to motivate and to inspire? And I would like to get it more into film where probably or for our, uh, from our point of view is yeah the point where we should start and where we have a chance to get the word out those are the solutions that are out there and how can we start here um so let's dive more into the film side and we I, are talking happy... Karina, we are talking the whole time about uh, a film side because this is a part if you don't have action you cannot you, you cannot do films about that uh, our films, for example, show mostly uh, show examples of people who have decided. That is what makes them strong. And of course, you have to do that in a in a way which I talked before. Uh, in a, a very or a high standard cinematic cinematic uh, yeah, quality. Yeah, if uh, if you enter a, a cinema with with a film of us, yeah, um, you you will not see that this is a documentary. You, 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 from the quality, from the, from the pictures, from the music, and all that, yeah. But, but it, it, and that's good, yeah, because I mean that's why they are so so um, successful. I mean, one of our first films, uh, cinema films, the Fourth Revolution. The titles are the Fourth Revolution. The titles is Power to Change, Climate Warriors, and all that. You see by that. Uh, we had uh, we had translated into 29 languages and reached more than 12 million people, and that's what we would like to have uh, even very very many more with the story of a new world. Uh, but and if you are if you are showing this, if you're really inviting people to be part of uh, this story, yeah, you have to do this. Uh, on a, that's why we are doing this uh, together, docu fiction. Yeah, as, as a part of fiction, this uh, we, we will talk about that later. Um, but this all depends, yeah, because it's not only philosophy, it is a part of philosophy. It all depends on people who have re re really decided they have changed their life. And that's, very, that's what I wanted to say. Part of it, it is this struggle, which we just talked about that. Other parts are. Yeah, this psychology change, which is which is very needed. The old, the older I'm, the older I'm, I, I it's see, I, this for me is so, so important, really, to get to know why people decide and change. Yeah, and this is this is um, still going on. I mean, not, I'm not the only one. This is uh, Johanna just told about that about re research parts, um, but this is it. Um, we, we are invited to change to a better world. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. And that's part of the films. That is the strongest part of the films. I'd like to add something, maybe also for... Uh, oh, hi. Hi, Stefan. We, we take you in right away. <laughs> we already see you. Um, 
for all the, the attendees that might not have dived deep so much into films or filmmaking, and also in regard of the, the name we gave our session, which is How Films Can Tell a Story of a New World, I'd like to step back and actually have a look at films and why are they so important of like driving system change further because as human beings when we get back into like history we love to sit around the campfire we love to share stories with each other that's the way knowledge was transformed through generations and like also built up and to use the same phrase again, we're psychologically wired in that way. We love good stories. When you have children, you read your children at night to get them into bed, right? Like stories are so, they're surrounding us all the time through advertisements, through media, through books to, that we read, through the way that we communicate with each other. So, and I say that as a great cineast, of course, that's the way, like the reason why I'm working as a filmmaker, but also because I studied media science actually. And from the beginning, it was so clear that I'm focusing on films because films are that one medium that brings together emotional perspectives with visions, with also like, it's such a multi-dimensional approach. You can hear, you can see, and you can feel, and there's, no other medium that has that possibility to actually bring us into the point of where we can travel without leaving the couch, right? Where we can see like new visions and new worlds without physically traveling there. So I was at a, a panel a few weeks back and I was it was a sustainable investment summit. Um, and actually I was asking the people there is there a film, a story, a book, an approach that really was that changing momentum car, what you are looking for your whole life, basically, the, the search for actually what, what motivates people to change. And for me personally, it was an inconvenient truth that made me an environmental activist, the film Earthlings that made me a vegetarian, and the film Tomorrow that made me a constructive filmmaker. So in my... <laughs> biography it's it's all like all the change the big change in my life has been related to films so I think we need to like for me that's crucial in actually talking about system change that we frame this in films so we can relate emotionally to it we see it we build a vision like in the the, the deepest meaning of the word right because that's what Frank just said with the book Ecotopia once you can imagine something, you can build something and you can manifest something. But if it's just like that kind of, oh my God, climate, the climate catastrophe is so big that I don't know what to do. You, you don't even get to the point of being visionary. And that's why I love that question that I was asking Frank, how does your utopia look like? Because once you, and we're gonna dive deep into this in the breakout sessions, just a little spoiler. <laughs> um, as soon as you can imagine something better, you can take the necessary steps to build that up. Even though it might take years, it's probably gonna take years, but that's worth it if you have that kind of anchor where you can hold yourself onto. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to actually add at this point something to Johanna's um, short speech, <laughs> um, because it was great and really, it, yeah, it is inspiring what you just said, because. I believe it's about the personal stories so that you really have something that's accessible for the you, for the me, for, yeah, for everyone. And doesn't feel like, oh, it's so big. It's so huge. I don't understand where to start. It's really showing like, what is your personal story and showing that to other people. And that's what it should be about. I think that we can yeah, get an idea of what is the person next to me doing? What is my neighbor doing? So that we, yeah, just have like something apparently small to orientate and I want to add Stefan at this point to the discussion because he would like to come in so feel free Stefan to um, start your camera open and unmute and I don't know if you have a question if you have something for the discussion feel free to come in yeah thank hello you. everybody um, yeah first I like to thank you at Fichner Media for your um, very inspiring films 
um, because this is somehow the tool for the environmental movement to have visions, strong visions to act. And um, of course, you have different people uh, from the environmental activists at Hambacher Forst or at Lützerath who really give their lives for uh, this vision uh, to um, many, many other uh, environmentalists and movements and people who uh, like to contribute in a certain way. So everybody needs to decide how to uh, support the environmental movement. And well, I'm, I'm, I'm active since many years and um, yeah, it was really feeling light, like nothing happens. You had the Paris Agreement and all the time nothing really happens and the, the people in power just block everything. And then you, then you had this movement Fridays for Future, um, a young generation standing up for the future and also these other related movements like Parents for Future, for example, Scientists for Future. I don't know if you uh, know these movements who support this environmental movement um, through various ways. For example, uh, Scientists for Future have a very, very uh, good and comprehensive uh, material collection of presentations that are free for use for uh, uh, educational purposes at schools or universities and for the public just freely available for anybody who wants to speak about the climate crisis and um, yeah this is I think we we just need to need to um, connect each other use your films promote your films and also all the other activities and come together and yeah, basically the people need to uh, decide in which way they want to decide as they want to support the broad and hopefully ever broadening environmental movement for real change. Thanks, that was it. Thank you, Stefan. I think that's a really, really good um, insight what you just gave and I believe that is also a good transition to actually the story of a new world, um, which uh, Johanna and Carl especially want to talk about because this is um, what you just mentioned. It is about collaboration to connect and to just find out like what other people are doing. And I want to give the word to Johanna and Carl at this point because there might be some people in this call who um, don't know that much about the film project that, that they are working on. And it would be good to get a good insight into this. You dream, you plan, you take action. Because besides money, courage rules the world. But what kind of world has it become? Every year that we do not take the necessary steps to stop climate change costs another 500 billion US dollars. Every year, 5.6% of the world's GDP is spent on fossil fuel subsidies. With just 1%, we could tackle the climate crisis. In the midst of chaos, war and destruction, we are simultaneously engaged in the greatest sustainable transformation process in history. This is our chance. Let's show millions of people the most visionary solutions with the global impact and film project, The Story of a New World. The Story of a New World finde ich deswegen so unterstützenswert und wichtig, weil schon so viele Perspektiven sich abzeichnen, wie wir in der Zukunft leben werden. Die Zeit für den echten Wandel ist da. Und das ist großartig. 
I am supporting this initiative and this film because I believe we indeed nowadays need prototypes, models, inspirations for a new world. Damit wir zeigen, wo überall Lösungen sind, wo engagierte Menschen unterwegs sind. Und unsere eigenen Haltungen hinterfragen, mit der wir dieser Klimakrise begegnen können. This is going to be something so new and it is the first of its kind. Was wir eigentlich tun müssen als Veränderungsmacher ist, unsere Aufmerksamkeit mehr hinlenken auf das ungeheure Veränderungspotenzial. Let's not speculate on the future, but create it. Yeah, I have. Um, I hope you you like the those uh, the pictures you see. It's always pictures of something which is already um, already uh, let's say where people have decided. Um, if I would like to get the presentation, then I could uh, tell to you why the presentation. Uh, the idea of this film is uh, to to have uh, let's say a documentary part and. Uh, Fictionary part. This is um, okay. So, yeah, uh, the, from the background, we have uh, been doing this since uh, 33 years. Uh, uh, for example, the fourth revolution was had uh, more, uh, the, the pictures or the films have had uh, more than 50 million viewers in the world. Um, We're doing this since more than 30 years and um, Uh, what is very important is that it is not only a film. Uh, it is already a film, but it's very important to have that, but it's, it's together with action. So it's, it's, the idea is to enjoy and to act. So most of the screenings are supported by local people who are just now, uh, let's say, uh, after having enjoyed uh, the, the film, um, You can they invite them to act locally or politically, and uh, this is very important. Is this is this a part of a of a movement, uh, which is which is powered by um, this this very important uh, film, Johanna? Thanks, Karen. Um, can we have the next picture, please? Yes. So we are currently on our biggest mission so far. We've done. Um, three previous big cinema films, as Carl just said, and more than 80 TV films, I think. Um, but we've never done something as big as the story of a new world. And you can already feel by the title that actually this is a really big story. Um, can we have the next um, picture, please? So what we do or try to do with the story of a new world is actually make people from passive viewers of films to active change makers. And we use two tools to actually um, realize that. The first tool, as Kai just said, is a documentary fictional um, film, a big cinema film, 90 minutes, that is showing the solutions out there, that is showing the mind shift that we need, the human potential that we have. And on the other side, the second tool is a worldwide impact campaign that is linking the screenings to local action events with local change makers that are already on the way of sustainability and already on the mission, basically. Um, so to dive a little more deeper into the story of a new world, we have figured out four main topics, basically. How does the new world look like or a sustainable way of living, to call it in a more realistic way, How does this look like in regard of urbanism, agriculture and architecture, for example? How do we gonna build in the future? What do we gonna eat in the future? How do we gonna grow our food in the future? Then we have the second part of economy, capital flows and technologies. How do we like get over this paradigm of adding more and more money to something to call it successful? and rather call more like add more value to the things that we're doing in our economy for example there are already solutions out there a circular economy that is keeping the value in the chain um also in regard of technologies like how do we uh like where do we get our electricity from 
Um, then we have social movements and politics, as I recently said, um, with the Erika Chenoweth studies. What has previous social movements made successful and what can we learn out of this in regard of what we're facing right now as a challenge? And then, and this is basically the biggest part because that's like framing it all up and that sits underneath everything that we do in the outside world. It's as Rainer framed it so nicely, it's the attitude with the things that we're doing um, and how we're relating to ourselves first and foremost which deepens our like our values and then how do we relate to other people how do we collaborate in better ways not just economy wise but then also how do we connect with nature and that's what frank said how do we collaborate with nature so uh, can you please make the next one just to give you a short sum up of what Kyle just said in his introduction, we are always linking our films with big impact campaigns, which means we have education and social media campaigns with influencers and ambassadors. Um, we collaborate with NGOs, foundations, and, and hundreds of action groups worldwide. And then um, we have like this impact campaign on 50 nations, which means like Every premiere screening in each nation, in each bigger city or whatsoever, is going to be accompanied by local action events. So when you've seen this film and you're sensitized for the toppings, you get out into the foyer of the cinema or your open air field or whatsoever, and you have the possibility of actually really talking to the people driving change in your communities already. You can talk to the local financial cooperative or you can talk to the guys I don't know, building solar um, power stations or whatsoever. You can imagine all the variety of solutions out there and you can really get to know the people that are already there. Okay, that is big enough. Sorry? What's going on? That I have a very quick story, but all is good. Okay. Good. Um, okay. Yes, and um, because we want to make this impact measurable. We are collaborating with Remotion Impact that is accompanying basically the whole impact campaign, which is gonna to take place over seven years minimum. So we have like social studies um, accompanying with it, or also we work together with data scientists that are like scanning the way people talk about the story of a new world and social media. And actually if there is a behavior change measurable after that film and impact campaign and that's just a really brilliant kind of way of working together and also gaining more knowledge about how do films work and like how we can use films to drive system change. And then we're gonna make this accessible for other filmmakers as well, of course. We would need the next picture. Um, that's just a short, um, just a short overlook of previous impact campaigns that we did and like, a lot of countries. Carl has traveled so much um, with this. 88 countries. Please go on, Tobias. <laughs> yeah, just a quick overview of a few of our ambassadors. We have many, many more. It's already more than 1,500 people supporting this. Please go on, Tobias. I'm posting in the chat, so maybe that's easier for you. Um, yeah, go on. <laughs> You can check all those on our website. We have many, many people in this. Carl, would you like to say something in regard of the distribution period? Yes, you see, uh, I mean, it is uh, at first of all, it is a cinema uh, film. Yeah, so and it is very important to know that uh, this, uh, this document, this docu fiction, we have uh, Juliette Binoche on board. Which is, um, I mean, which is it's a very, very famous Oscar-winning uh, actor, and uh, yeah, you see uh, the distribution. Uh, what what it is going on then? It is uh, because uh, a part of that that we talked about this action. It is it will be distributed uh, via, let's say, all all possibilities of. Uh, distribution, uh, p t television, uh, special screenings, DVD, Blu-ray, and all that, free TV. Um, and uh, one part is, is the school screenings and impact campaigns, which is, uh, in my heart, <laughs> it is, uh, yeah, the most important uh, uh, subject. Um, 
And we have had very good uh, examples from other other yeah from other films we had for example two weeks uh, in israel where where i met more than uh, more than several thousand uh, pupils with films of mine and <clears throat> or we've shot uh, <clears throat> our films in uh, in slum in the slum in uh, nairobi um, uh, more than three thousand uh, people who looked at it i was a little bit ashamed because and this will be different. Uh, the films sometimes <clears throat> are a little bit uh, European, European focused. Yeah, from uh, we show it from the past, from the from the look of uh, of Europe. This will be different in the story of a new world because um, we we are aware that um, this invitation is very important for people outside of um, yeah the, of of Europe. Yeah, um, <clears throat> above all, oh no, from the beginning of all dreams, or of all actions, uh, there is the question of money. You see that um, <clears throat> we, we need uh, 4.6 million Europe, uh, Euro. Uh, we have already achieved nearly 3 million and we need uh, still 1.6 million. People can invest, you can invest in the film, you can, but you can, let's say, have uh, yeah, give, give um, support on another way. It's not only investment. It is uh, you can buy tickets in in advance and all that. Uh, look at the at the website. You can see it. We need it. We urgently need it. But <clears throat> we want like uh, we're on a way, the good way. Yeah, and um, we would like to to close the financiation in the next three months, and then we start. Yes. Thank you, you so that? much you for introducing yeah. us to your great project. It's really inspiring and I'm really happy to find out more in the future um, and to see where it goes. And I mean, you, we are experts about storytelling and how a story could look like. So maybe you could give um, the audience some ideas how um, how they can create their own story or their best reality utopias based on what you are doing um, so that we can get a little bit more into the active part and maybe create together some stories and utopias in the next part. So Johanna and Carl and I know maybe you have some suggestions how they could get started. And then we have after that, the interview of Julius van der Laar, who has probably some more good tips for us. Okay, so with a view on the time and <laughs> it's, it's a Monday, so maybe our attendees don't have so much more time after 12. I just gonna make it really short. So like my top three tips of becoming an active change maker. I love that kind of uh, framing. Number one would be connect and collaborate in your local communities or also through platforms such as, for example, the do community or count us in get inspiration on, for example, uplink or on the story of a new world channels as well. We are already distributing solutions out there or on conferences offline and online like connect with other people. The second one would be talk about your progress with your friends and family, but also on social media and in public, because sustainability is a lifelong journey. And there is not a definite goal to reach. So it's more about what are your next steps? And if you talk to other people, it is easy to like try and error, right? And to like exchange experiences, but because that's the way people learn and we learn. Um, and also then the third one would be, I have many, many more. I just need to sum it up in three. <laughs> Lose the levers of corporate action. Um, address your companies and the ones where you're working or where the, the ones where you're buying. Um, address your companies to actually make something better. For example, ask in your local store if they have paper bags. I mean, it's some things are so easy, um, but I've still been in a store where they have plastic bags, even though it's forbidden already. So kind of like show people that you care. Um, and yeah, follow, follow role models. And just like that, that, to sum it up, I know it's not a fourth point, it, it stands overall, trial and error. I mean, talk about things that went wrong and what you can learn out of it, make mistakes because this is an unknown road and it's completely normal and human and it's so great to actually be on that process. And so often we talk about being perfect to consider yourself an environmental activist and to like 
don't do this and don't use that and we are all human and like be be kind and humble with yourself so <laughs> that's that's it carl <laughs> it's nice um uh, and, and decide the most important is really to decide uh, once you have an idea just just do it yeah very many people discuss it and for example in the in the in our company the fashion media we have had some decisions uh which are uh, very very good for, for example the green shooting it's called green shooting yeah so uh, doing the, doing filming uh, we don't eat meat you know vegetarian food and all that this is which is uh, you're feeling better what i said before the the and for me as a, as a ceo of of the film, uh, of, of this company, uh, the hardest thing is the decision not to fly in Germany. To and that say, uh, this is hard. I can tell you because uh, normally, which I have a date in, in Berlin, uh, I go in the morning. I leave the, uh, the house and uh, the, and have some some dates in, uh, in Berlin, so, so Dresden or somewhere with the other office, and then I go back in the evening. It's just now, it is two days. Uh, so you slow down a little bit, um, but I like that. I mean, you, it is that is the more that is once you have done it, yeah, it is it's a part of the life. If, if, for example, the changing the food and all that, it's a part of the life. Or uh, I don't understand people to to buy a fossil driven car. I mean, if you once once you drive an electric car, it is very much easier and it's very much. Uh, less noise and all that I, I, and but you have to charge it up after let's say 250 or 300 kilometers so we have a break you have a break of 40 minutes 30 40 minutes a break what it what a um yeah um what a cadeau and a, a present what a present of the life to have uh, after two two or three uh hours of driving to have a break <laughs> example all right an example so I think we should hear what Julius van der Laar has to tell us about campaigning and storytelling because he gave us some great in insight. We actually recorded um, this interview before and to just let you know what he is doing. Um, he's a storytelling expert. He's an international political strategist and campaign consultant in 2008 and 2012. He worked for Barack Obama's presidential campaign and is the founder of the Campaigning Academy in Berlin. Julius, thank you so much for taking your time to this expert input in our Catalyst 2030 session. We're so pleased to have you here. And we're having a few... Good to be here. Great. We're having a few questions. <laughs> Let us know what is your personal background to storytelling? Well, I mean, I've always enjoyed listening to stories, right? As a child, uh, you know, my uh, youth, uh, stories were obviously all around us. But um, I think the distinct notion of storytelling and a professional aspect to political communications and campaign storytelling really started when I joined the Obama campaign. I put the uh, hope and change poster up right behind me, right? So 2008 was a great campaign. I joined it as a young volunteer and then started working full time for the Obama campaign. And, you know, Obama always told great stories, great stories about hope, about change, about progress. And it was emotional, but most important, I think people were able to find themselves within the stories that he told. And that made policy and all the great things that he wanted to accomplish during his four years in office and later eight years in office, you know, really brought them home, made it personal. I think that's what politics should be about, personal ideals, personal uh, ideas that will be pushed forward. And Obama made sure that people saw themselves within those great political projects that he was willing to take on. Now, storytelling is not only important as politics, but also regarding the challenges that we face nowadays, especially in organizations and institutions. So from your perspective, why is telling a story important, especially with respect to social organizations and entrepreneurs nowadays? Right. I mean, we all have tremendous ideas, you know, policies, you know, plans, strategies on how to improve the world, how to improve different organizations, a country, a society, whatever it might be. 
but we got to organize those ideas. And so a lot of times you'll see people put together a slide deck, you know, PowerPoint presentation. So we'll put down all the different bullet points on the things that we need to change in order to get to the mountaintop that we want to reach. But the problem is that people a lot of times can't take in that type of organization and that type of information. So that's why we take stories to organize, to help people easier understand and then, of course, live those ideals and those strategies. So I think storytelling is absolutely crucial for any journey, any organizational journey, any transformation journey. And that's why you got to put into a story rather than just tell people the different steps that they need to take. Do you have a really good example on hand where it's proof that it worked, actually? Can you think of any good story that you came across recently that you really, really liked? Well, I'll, I'll go back to the Obama campaign, right? I mean, President Obama came with the idea to change the country, but on a very concrete uh, level. I mean, he wanted to put in uh, healthcare reform. That was one of the main things that he wanted to get across. Well, that's a hard sell, right? And a lot of people are skeptical. Well, you want to change, you know, one third of the economy. You want to change so many different things that people have gotten accustomed to. And so that's what we need to tell a story of what it actually means, how it impacts you and everyday Americans or citizens all across the world. So I think actually putting that into a story allows us to actually get into resonance with the, with the facts and the ideas. And so what happens is the following, right? The way I think about storytelling is that, you know, we use our words and we don't even have to talk about social media or Instagram stories or anything like that, right? We tell a story, what happens, right? I tell a story that creates pictures in your head, right? Those pictures lead to images, Those images ideally will get to the point where you feel some sort of empathetic connection, right? Because you are all of a sudden able to feel the things that I'm talking about. Well, you feel it, that will lead to emotions. And then emotion, of course, will lead to action. This is where you as a you know, social organization, organization or a political organization will actually be able to draw in an audience and then get them active. So I think that's the sort of cascade that we want to get to with the help of storytelling. So it's a tool Uh, just like many other campaign tactics and strategies that can be deployed in order to get people active. I can totally relate to that as a filmmaker as well, when you're talking about images and emotions and actions. So coming back to the bullet point thing, actually, right. what are do's and don'ts in storytelling from your perspective? Well, I think one of the most important things in storytelling is don't be boring, right? And there are a lot of structures that will help us to get to that point. Uh, there's a story spine from Pixar. But what I'd get to is, you know, uh, if you're not familiar with anything regarding storytelling yet, I mean, of course, look at some of the great storytellers and try to emulate what they do. I mean, when Steve Jobs is on stage or when Barack Obama gives a speech or even, I mean, I hate to say it because I'm not a big fan, but what Donald Trump does on stage actually works, too. He does great storytelling, whether we like it or not. But If you want to look at a structure, uh, go to Joseph Campbell. Joseph Campbell is sort of the godfather of storytelling, right? He took a look at the old Odyssey and the great Greek dramas and sort of deciphered the different steps that one needs to take in order to tell a story. And what I will say is one of the things that I always notice what is missing in a lot of stories that don't quite connect with an audience is you can't ever have a great story without a villain, right? And a lot of times people are afraid of a villain. We wanted to tell a great story about change, about progress, especially in social organizations. But the most important thing about a great story is to have a villain, a villain that will mobilize people and that will get people active because they see we actually need to change. There's a need and a desire for change. And a lot of times that will come from the villain, not just from the mountaintop that you want to reach. So start with the villain, figure out who he is or she is or it is and then actually campaign against it. And actually maybe to add, make yourself vulnerable as well, right? If we cannot relate to something emotionally, then like, where does it lead us to? So- Totally, totally agree, yeah. Let us know finally, because we don't have so much time. And despite of that, I mean, there's so much to talk about regarding storytelling and your expertise. But for today, this is my last question. What skills are needed for campaigning storytelling and actually how and maybe also where can they be trained? Well, 
one of the things, one piece of advice I'd give to any anyone who wants to go out and change things is you got to be able to answer two questions. And the one question is, why me and why now? Every presidential candidate, every candidate, doesn't matter where they are, need to be able to answer those two questions, why me and why now? And so try to find a rationale for what it is that you're trying to do and why it is that you're trying to accomplish that. So why me and why now? Or if you're an organization, why us and why now? And so this will tie into a story of the story of self, what led us to this point? Why are we getting started? What's the villain? The th second thing is, of course, the story of us, uh, what makes us unique as a group. And then, of course, the story of now. Why is it so relevant at this point? Um, I do a lot of trainings on storytelling, and you can find all that stuff on my on my website. I think you can go through any campaign story, any of the great political campaigns. You'll see this. And a lot of great NGOs use that type of storytelling as well. So uh, in the end, I think it's practice and practice and get some feedback and do some more practice, just like you have, Johanna. And um, I think storytelling can be a lot of fun. And I think it's probably one of the most powerful tools that we have in our campaigning toolbox if we want to engage others and get them on our side in order to actually see the change that we want to want to create in the world. That's amazing. And actually, like this point is so easy to remember why me and why now so thank you so much for your useful input into our catalyst 2030 session and thanks for having me yes it was great and we definitely link your website in the show notes so people can reach out to you personally you use thanks a lot please do look forward to seeing you again soon bye 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 <laughs> uh so we got some great insights and some good tips and with those at hand, we would like to go over actually to our um, workshop part. And I know we are pretty late and we would invite everyone to stay a little longer. We can, if you are able to, um, we are happy to host our breakout sessions at this point. And yeah, I hope you all can stay for a little while. And then I would ask to start the exercise presentation so that we have an overview of what exactly we want to try to do. Welcome back, everyone. Great. Yeah, it was Welcome a highlight for back. me to tell that this, this part. This was a highlight for me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. cool. <laughs> it's great to hear. We are excited to hear um, because no one knows. I hopped actually from proof to proof a little bit and listened for a tiny little bit to get an idea. Um, but we invite you new now. And as I said, maybe you could like choose one or you had chosen one po person who could just talk a little bit about what you were talking about. What were the utopias that came up? Maybe you had some similarities and to kind of summarize for the other groups what was happening. And if we could start with group one, Johanna was in that group. Um, did you decide on one person who will present us a little bit about their takeaways, their outcome? We haven't. So please, anyone who wants to share something, feel free. I know we could talk forever. <laughs> so we've been talking about our perfect days in Utopia. And what I found really interesting is that all of the participants in the breakout sessions both mentioned um, equally individually parts of their lives as like if I can if I can share that in a bigger round as like sitting on a desk and looking into nature or like living in a, in a shared house with other people or driving with the bike to the co-working space so that's like very personal parts but then also they the utopia was about the bigger picture for example we have more biodiversity, we use renewable energies, um, the co-working space is built up in a circular way, or we are only working together with customers that uh, like add to our values. And I find that interesting because we have that both dimensions, right? We have the dimension going deep into ourselves of like, how do we imagine utopia and a better way of living? But then also it is so much linked to the outside world and to like the bigger system changes that are necessary as well. Mm -hmm. Very okay. interesting. It's cool to hear that you had some similarities there. And let's maybe move on to group two. Are there some outcomes? We have a few more minutes, maybe. Yes, I can tell you that was we had one participant um, 
who is engaged in toilets. Her, her, her vision was that everybody has a, has a toilet in the world. And this, 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 this was touching me very, very much, yeah, because this is the reality of millions of people that they don't have. By the way, they don't have electricity, for example, and uh, uh, and uh, yeah, this this is this is the reality of the world. Yeah, we have eight hundred million people who are suffering from hunger. Uh, we have millions of people who don't have any toilet, and she's working for that. She comes from an Asian country, and this is an NGO. And um, yeah, they really they strong, really working for that that people get a toilet. Um, and uh, this was touching me. Yeah. So that's yeah, why I said it's a highlight for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's so yeah, it's something apparently so small but important in other areas um, of the world. So it's a good thing to talk about this. I think we could go on forever with that and just like talk about the future and how it could look like. And what it shows us that I think sometimes it's hard to imagine that there like even if it's such a small thing and apparently it's seems not to be important for others, it's good to just get the story out and to talk about it, what touches us and it might touch someone else far away. Just like Carl um, talked about the toilets and I think um, Zarika, I hope I said your name right, just um, posted the link to um, that project. So um, it's really important that we share our stories and get it out. And maybe at this point, if there's some more question, feel free to ask. Um, we're going to stay here for a few more minutes. We totally understand if you have to leave because we are 15, 16 minutes over. Um, but for me, it was a really great experience to um, just host that whole session to get all those ideas that, out, that are out there. And I'd like um, to invite Karl, Rainer and um, Johanna, if there is anything else you want to share. I'd like to thank Frank Otto and um, Julius van der Laar for their time and um, the interviews they gave us. It were really great insights. Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you, Karina. Thank, yeah, thank you, Karina, for, uh, for the moderation. Yeah. It was a pleasure. <laughs> Best tip from my side for everybody, please sign up for the newsletter for a story of a new world to keep in touch with everything that's going on. Great, thank you very much. <laughs> and thank you, Tobias, for the background administration. Sorry, Thanks, Tobias. Tobias. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And thank you to Catalyst for having that great Catalyzing Change Week. Maybe you find some more sessions. There's a lot going on this week. Check it out. <laughs>